uh, denk ik volgen, ze zijn alle stages het ons gewen. Um, ons het een probleem gehad op een snel traject wat uh, ons lekker een probleem een beetje gehad en die kaart het uitgesnijd, maar ons het gaan uitgesorteer en ons het verder geen probleem gehad nie, ons rijd net lekker. The only thing that you've got to do is just try and stay on the road, not get off into any of the uh, grass or any kind of signs. And um, I hope that we're going to do that. Ja, ons is, um, ons is nou so 8 seconden uit mekaar uit en Rolof is voor ons, maar dit is nou al paar tijd erin is so gebeur en uh, Ik zal maar kijken aan die einde wie voor. Ons is gelukkig dat ons al twee in 1600 standaard moet is rein. Ons is voor die gemodificeerde 1600 nou dat Ben van de Westijs nog gerol is. So ons zal maar kijken hoe lijkt het verder voor en toe. Wel, ons is voor ogen derde weggetrek. Ons is derde al veel in eerste in klas B. En uh, tot dusver vandag het het redelijk goed gegaan. Behalve dat die kar baie uh, zwaar kit sit. So as we bij de hele tijd op, op uh, net vier in plaats van vijf cilinders loop. Maar... Ons het maar net nog eens aangegaan, ons leen nog steeds op die stadium derde al veel en uh, voor in ons klas, ons hoop ons kan daar blij tot die einde van die tijd rijden. Um, we're just changing the rear stab axle, uh, the car is playing out a bit on the rear here, so um, we don't want to take any chances, we want to try to finish this time. The engine went a bit sick, uh, looks like we had a broken valve spring, inlet valve spring, so uh, looks like we're out of the event at the moment. Well, we've been having a good run. Um, as you might know, Sorrel's not doing the last event of the season, and that means that we must try and win the championship on this one. And to do that, we have to finish second. So we're quite happy to be in second place. Although I must say that uh, is going very quickly, uh, but we're not taking any chances. And we're in a nice second place, uh, some 40, 50 seconds ahead of uh, Nick Duval, and that's a quite a nice position to be in. Although maintaining that they were not trying to catch the rally leaders, Sara von Amever and Franz Bortov set about their task with a vengeance on the next stage, achieving the best time in the Audi Sport Quattro. In the wet and treacherous conditions, four-wheel driven cars were enjoying a substantial traction advantage over the more conventional vehicles. No one felt this more keenly than Hannes Krobler and Piet Swanepoel, whose skyline broke a side shaft, which converted the car to two-wheel drive. The resultant poor handling caused them to lose 17 seconds to Van Amerver and Porto. To the delight of the large crowd, who were beginning to anticipate a close fight to the finish. Having solved their misfiring problem, Nick Duval and Guy Hodgson were putting up a superb display in the Volkswagen Passat, while hanging on to third place overall, and their lead in Class B. The electrical problem, which plagued many other teams due to the wet conditions, did not seem to affect them, and they were rapidly becoming the foremost favourite crew with enthusiastic crowds. Janne Habig and Ewald von Rensburg were having a relatively trouble-free run in their Class B Nissan Skyline in fourth place. Others were not so lucky, with the Class D Skylines of Carver and Judd and Nuna de Cunha and Paul Rulliard retiring due to wet electrics. Kate Tonian, Bruce Anderson Terry and Alan Castley were still in the running in their old Toyota liftback, as were Glenn Gibbon and Peter Cuffley, who led in Class C in their Toyota Conquest, and Alicia Miranda and Ivor Peltz, who were the top privateers and Class E leaders in their Volkswagen Golf GTI. Bruce Ruas and Dave McGregor were hanging on to sixth place overall and entertaining the spectators with their Class B Nissan Skyline. These brutish rear-wheel driven cars have always been extremely spectacular on dirt roads. In the prevailing wet conditions, they were providing even more excitement than usual, with lovers of long opposite block slides howling with delight at the efforts of brave drivers like Ruas. Richard Slava and Douglas Judd were suffering various misfiring problems. Due to moisture in the fuel management system of their Class D Nissan Skyline, they were soon to retire, a poor reward after a sterling drive. After the retirement of Carver and Judd, the Class D leadership went to Jeff Saunders and Gary Shue in their smoothly driven 16-valve Barnes Volkswagen Golf GTI. Toyota dealer team crew Rulof Pekin and Francois Jordan were grimly hanging on to the Class D lead with their Toyota Conquest RS 1600. They were marginally ahead of the dealer team Volkswagen Golf CSL of Frank Lindemann and Johan Schielen, who seemed to escape most of the water-orientated maladies experienced by other crews.
Glenn Gibbons and Peter Cuffley were enjoying a comfortable lead in Class C with their dealer team Toyota Conquest RS1600 after solving some electrical problems during the refuel host. Paul of Piazza Musso and Cindy Crossley were also plagued by a water problem in their Class C Volkswagen Golf CSL. But Alessio Miranda and Ivor Feltz, who didn't seem to be threatened in any way for their lead in Class E with their 8 valve Volkswagen Golf GTI. Hannes Kobler and Pete Swanepoel again had the benefit of four-wheel drive in stage nine in the Nissan, but on the tight road, slightly too narrow for the turbocharged B. Nick Duval and Guy Hodgson, still going strongly in third place with a Volkswagen Passat, experienced the same problem, but continued to dominate Class B of the rally. Frank Lindemann and Johan Seelen were again in the Class F lead in their dealer team Volkswagen Golf CSL. Thomas Kobler and Pete Swanepoel were back in stride in the Class A Nissan Skyline, setting up the quickest time in Stage 10, which led to a wet and slippery speed test in the centre of Malmesbury. With the end of the rally and the first overall victory for the four-wheel driven Nissan Skyline in sight, this was no time for mistakes. Kobler obliged with a superb display of car control in the 600 horsepower vehicle, which is not suited to car parking lots in any way. Kobler and Swanepoel shared the quickest time in the speed test with Zara von Amerva and Franz Borsov in the Audi Sport Quattro, which had lost its front nose cone in a water hole, apart from being stranded for a minute in the stage when the electrics got wet. It was clear at the stage that von Amerva had no intention of chasing the leading Nissan and would consolidate his second place in order to clinch the 1988 South African Drivers and Navigators titles. Some of the competitors ran into very real navigational difficulties at this late stage in the event and almost visualized sleeping in the car park that evening before they could find their way out. Anas Krobler and Pete Swanepoel were full of confidence for a victory and they completed a triumphant weekend by winning the last stage of the rally at the Cape Showgrounds in the skyline. A fitting tribute to the dedication and hard work which had eventually turned the complex car into a rally winner. Von Berber and Borsov came home in second place to win the 1988 South African Drivers and Navigators title. It would be Superfan's 11th and Borsov's 10th. Nick Duval and Guy Hodgson came in third overall and the clear Class B winners in the Volkswagen Passat, while Janni Hubbig and Gerwald von Rensburg finished in a fine fourth place in their Nissan Skyline. Lewis Roos and Dave McGregor clinched the fifth place overall in their well-driven Class B Nissan Skyline after a gritty performance under difficult conditions. While local heroes Bruce Anderson Terry and Alan Casley took the sixth place in their old but well-prepared six-lender Class B Toyota liftback. The first privateers and the winners in Class E were Alessio Miranda and Iva Feltz in their mini panel beater sponsored Volkswagen Golf GTI, ending the Toyota dealer team dominance of this class. Frank Lindemann and Johan Seelen marked up another Class F victory in their 1600cc dealer team Volkswagen Golf CSL, while a jubilant Jeff Sanders and Gary Schuch took a well-deserved win in Class D in the Barnes Volkswagen Golf GTI. Glenn Gibbons and Peter Cuffley scored a Class C victory for the Toyota dealer team in their Conquest RS1600, but the champagne belonged to the ecstatic Nissan team after the best weekend of their year. Man, uh, ons vir oogend baie goed begin met die eerste sneldeel waar ons Sarel en soos redelijk baie tyd afgevat het, ek dink het het hulle een beetje afgesit in die stadium. Um, ons baie goed gegaan, laat ons ons een trend half minuut voor Sarel op een kool, toet uh, ons een achterzij as gebreek. En dit het ons een beetje teruggegooi. Maar ons het wie uit die sneldeel uitgekom en ander sy as ingesit en die krane oopgedraai en alles wat hier die karriekie het net al die pad baie goed geloop en ons het geen probleme gehad nie. En ons blij om hier te wees en ons ook blij om te wees. Well, I've now won the championship and uh, 
That's basically what I wanted to do in this rally. I can't do the last one. I have an overseas commitment, so I had to do it here. And that's one of the reasons why I never went off to Krobi, but uh, just as well. I think it was very, very wet and very slippery, and if it, it was going to be a dice, it could have been quite a